Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Gart Saad. He's an evolutionary behavioral scientist, an author and a professor. I do not react to Gart Saad because I personally care for him. However, there has been a very peculiar development surrounding his persona lately, especially on Twitter. Because as you can see, Gatsad is followed by Elon Musk, which is after all the owner of Twitter slash X. And moreover, Elon Musk has been retweeting his material. So now, of course, the question becomes, what is his material? What is Gatsad actually talking about? So as you can see here, he's been talking about Islam and Palestine. But who is he talking with? He's talking with Musab Hussein Yusuf, which is an ex-Muslim. Yes, of course, all of this is again against Islam. What else? And this is why Gatsad and Elon Musk partner up and they're urging you to stop protesting at the universities. How can we save our universities? Or moreover, Elon Musk is warning everybody that so-called Islamists are demonstrating in Hamburg, Germany. Elon Musk writes, Surely demanding overthrow of the government in Germany is illegal, huh? I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, since Elon Musk visited Israel and other places that I don't want to name here on this platform, his whole narrative with Islam, or rather against Islam, of course, has changed completely. And now he's, of course, encouraged by his friends to push certain people in the algorithm of Twitter so other people find out the truth about Israel, about Palestine, and, of course, about bad, bad Islam. All right, guys, before we jump into the video, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. All right, we are on X slash Twitter. Let's hear what Dr. Gatsad has to say about Islam. Please enlighten us. I think it is a misnomer to constantly come up with qualifiers before the word Islam. And let me explain why that is. There is no Islam, there is no Islamism. Islamism is part of Islam. Islam is a set of codified ideas that has a spiritual element and it has a political element. That political element is Islamism. The manner in which now people are talking about Islamism is it's, it's, it's something that is outside of Islam. And I understand the reason why people want to do this. It's because they feel as though it's too gauche to frontally attack a religion. So if you attack something that has magically ISM at the end of it, Islamism, that's okay. If you attack Islam, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, if we're truly going to have a serious and honest conversation about this topic, we have to recognize that it's not radical Islam, it's not Islamism, it's not militant, violent extremism, and, <clears throat> and every other permutation of a euphemism that you come up with. It's Islam. Now, most people <laughs> choose... It's absolutely amazing how people can just vomit out their thoughts and nobody blinks an eye. No, actually, it's all Islam, right? There is no extremism. It is all Islam after all. So how about other religions? How about certain extremists within Christianity? How about certain extremists within Judaism? Is that part of the religion as well? This is what Christianity and Judaism is after all? No, of course not. In those instances, you would say those are extremists or maybe you wouldn't even mention that they're Christians and Jews in the first place. But you would clearly make a distinction. However, when it comes down to Islam, there is no such thing. Certain Muslims might not be so extreme, but Islam surely is. Islam is always extremism. It is implicit within the religion. What is the proof for this? To practice a cafeteria version of Islam. They pick <laughs> the parts that they like, mm -hmm. and they ignore the endless parts that they don't like. Sure. And that becomes 
their personal relationship with Islam. Yeah. That doesn't mean- that, But most people do that with most religions, right? Most people do that with most religions, but yeah. we don't, you and I and everybody else don't stay up worrying about Seventh-day Adventists. So right. to the extent that Islam is now on the radar and we have to talk about- It's always the same with those enemies of Islam. He doesn't give you any proof whatsoever. He simply makes the statement that Islam is always radical, always extreme. Certain Muslims might not be, but the religion of course is. And then he further on purpose, of course, makes a ridiculous statement. Yeah, well, we're not worrying about Seventh-day Adventists, ha 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 ha. The point of the story is, how about the Christ Church shooting? That was clearly religiously motivated and the person was an Orthodox Christian. But we're not going to mention that, of course. The focus is on Islam after all. Why is the focus on Islam? Because it is the only religion that adheres to its own principles. If they're talking about certain radical aspects of Islam, they're simply talking about the same principles that are found in every other religion. There is, for example, a distinction between male and female. You have the same principle within Christianity and Judaism as well. Or that there is capital punishment for apostasy, which was found within Judaism, within Christianity as well. I mean, you don't have to be a genius in order to recognize that the three Abrahamic faiths are very, very similar. The main difference is, however, that the other faiths have lost their value, especially Christianity, of course. And Christianity was a leading world power, but it is not anymore. Now it is liberalism, of course, and the proponents of liberalism, such as Dr. Gatsad, they simply see that their worldview, their fabric of the universe is crumbling because people actually adhere to pure monotheism, which is Islam. They actually, yes, they do believe in their religion and this is why it is such a thorn in their eye and this is why they paint this extreme picture they're telling you that islam is extremism but yet again what is your proof for that what are you basing it upon upon the quran upon hadith or upon muslim governments or muslim history are there not any muslim nations in this world at this moment if it was true what he says and islam is just this violent absolutely extreme religion why are not all the Muslim countries gathering together, attacking the whole world, declaring jihad left and right, screaming Allahu Akbar, blowing themselves up, right? Why don't we see this third world war? No, if you actually look into the world, then you will see that Christian nations and Jewish nations are actually doing the war after all. But this hypocrite won't admit that, of course. Islam is now on the radar and we have to talk about it honestly. <laughs> we have to stop trying to give a free pass to Islam, but the real problem is something else, some variant of it. Okay? Yeah. Islam is codified in the Quran, it's codified in the Hadith, it's codified in the Sirah, the biography of Muhammad. That's it. Now, is there a way that I could read those texts and come up with a message of brotherly love and love for Jews? No, that's not Islamism, <laughs> that's not. But the same con men after all, they have the same agenda. What is that agenda? depict the Palestinians as absolute terrorists, they are the evil, evil Muslims, and therefore justify the genocide that Israel is committing. Because, hey, after all, those evil, evil Muslims hate Jews. Therefore, let's bombard their hospitals, let's kill their children. It's all justified, of course, because every Muslim is a terrorist, every Muslim is an extremist. This is what Islam is about. Don't you see how they're trying to flip the script? But they have no proof for it. He simply says, yeah, Quran, Hadith, okay, quote it, show me the evidence, show me the proof. But moreover, look into history. Here we are on the jewishchronicle.com. So this is not a Muslim page, nor a Christian page. This is a Jewish page. And it states, so what did the Muslims do for the Jews? Double. First in 570 CE, when the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, was born, the Jews and Judaism were on the way to oblivion. And second, the coming of Islam saved them, providing a new context in which they not only survived, but flourished, laying foundations for subsequent Jewish cultural prosperity also in Christendom, through the medieval period into the modern world. By the 4th century, Christianity had become the dominant religion in the Roman Empire. One aspect of this success was opposition to rival faiths, including Judaism. 
along with massive conversion of members of such faiths, sometimes by force, to Christianity. Much of our testimony about Jewish existence in the Roman Empire from this time on consists of accounts of conversions. Great and permanent reductions in number through conversion between the 4th and the 7th centuries brought with them a gradual but relentless whittling away of the status, rights, social and economic existence and religious and cultural life of Jews all over the Roman Empire. It continues on, but let's get to the interesting part, highlighted here. Had Islam not come along, Jewry in the West would have declined to disappearance and Jewry in the East would have become just another oriental cult. So I'm going to link the article in the description box below so you can read it for yourself. My point, however, here is, of course, that historically speaking, Islam saved Jewry. This is a historically provable fact after all. No, it was not Christianity. Christianity would have wiped out Judaism, as you can read here. But again, those enemies of Islam won't tell you that. They will simply emotionally try to manipulate you based upon absolutely nothing. They will list no sources whatsoever. They will simply tell you, well, believe me, Islam is such and such. It is absolutely ridiculous. However, if you open your eyes and look into the real agenda behind it, you will understand it. As I said in the beginning of the video, all of this now started after Elon Musk, the owner of X, visited by his own will, Israel. Yeah. Islam is codified in the Quran, it's codified in the Hadith, it's codified in the Sirah, the biography of Muhammad. That's it. Now, is there a way that I could read those texts and come up with a message of brotherly love and love for Jews? No, that's not Islamism. That's not. Yeah, I had to play that clip again because he simply tells you, well, by reading the Quran, by reading the Hadith, by reading the Sirah, which he, of course, all read after all, he cannot come up with some sort of brotherly love towards Jews. But is he listing any sources? No, of course not. You will never see any type of sources. However, it would be pretty interesting, don't you think, if we look into the Jewish sources? Abu Zara 26b. Even the best of Gentiles should be killed. Even the best, you say? Yeah, well, thanks for the brotherly love. Aboda Sara 37a. A Gentile girl who is three years old can be violated. I guess I was wrong all along and God Sad was actually right. This sounds extremely loving, extremely compassionate to me. God Shas 2-2. A Jew may violate, but not marry a non-Jewish girl. Okay... Charlotte Ushtzabot, I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat right, the book of Jore Dia 17. A Jew should and must make a false oath when the Goyim asks if our book contain anything against them. So this is absolutely rich, of course, because it is the Muslims that are always allegedly trying to deceive the whole world. Oh, Takiya, Takiya, this is what you do. But apparently in the Jewish sources, we find that they must give false testimony against the, the Gentiles when the Gentiles want to know what is found within their books. Very interesting. And let's end it with Baba Nesia 114.6. The Jews are human beings, but the nations of the world are not human beings, but beasts. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. It is very interesting. Gad Saad himself comes from a Jewish background, however identifies only culturally as Jewish and is an atheist. That of course reminds us of Richard Dawkins, who just proclaimed himself to be a cultural Christian, but an atheist first and foremost. So now all the culturally religious people are getting together because they all don't believe in God and they are attacking the only religion that does. It is the only religion, Islam, that believes in the worship of one God alone without attributing anything else to it. We are not worshipping a man like the Christians do and we do not believe that we are more intelligent and can win in a debate like the Jews do. Islam is pure monotheism and moreover, on a very pragmatic level, Islam is the only religion that people do believe in. Because Islam is not only the fastest growing religion by birth rates, no, but by conversion. People in this modern day and age of science 
actually do accept this backward way of living, right? This backward medieval religion. How can that be? Because when people are sincere and genuine and do their own research, they find that Islam is logical, coherent, and simply the superior way to live. Because everything you guys offer leads to obscurity. You're telling us to not believe in anything. You're telling us that there are no universal morals, that morals are simply relative. It is whatever you want it to be. But then you want us to adhere to your worldview. Why? You guys are atheists. There is no right and wrong. There is no good and evil. But Islam apparently is evil. What is it based upon? Nothing but utilitarianism, which is a branch of liberalism. You want to do whatever you want to do without harming anybody. This is extremely subjective, of course, and therefore somebody within your society has to dictate what is moral and what is not. Essentially, this might makes right, because whoever gains popularity within your liberal society will dictate what is right and wrong. But if you take this line of argumentation, there is no argument against the Nazis. There is no argument against Adolf Hitler, because by populace, all of those people held a certain opinion, and therefore they must have been right after all. No, it does not come down to majority. In Islam, we know the truth is the truth. Right is right, wrong is wrong. You are not dictating it for us. God gives the rules, we obey them because they're naturally superior to man-made rules. The atheists now understand that this is truly what Muslims believe. The atheists understand now that the Muslims believe more in their ideology than the atheists do in their own ideology because the atheist is basing his whole worldview on science. But science is continuously developing and therefore the atheist is basing his whole worldview on not knowing. And not knowing will never be as strong as the belief in God. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely amazing, man. You guys are destroying yourself. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh